I've worked for every artistic director except for Guthrie. Not, of course, while they were artistic directors, but every single one. Gascon? Misanthrope. And then Langham and Phillips and Williams and Hirsch and Manette. Every single one except okay. for Tony. So the Queen sits there and receives the Prime Minister coming. The Queen has sat with how many Prime Ministers of how many governments coming to give a report? You as an actor have worked with all these artistic directors. You've seen them come, you've seen them go. Mm -hmm. What's it like? Well, I think that those who cleave more closely to the, the original plan have a greater sort of long-term success. You can have you know, splashy success here and there, but if you, if you really love the stage that Tanya made and you grasp the idea that Guthrie had, just put as many people in, the community of them, they should be as close as possible together, just stuff them in, let them shake with laughter or weep together. That communal experience is really what we want here. And let's not dress up these plays too much. There's not much to discuss. There's not gonna be a big set. So you bring the cathedral or the court on with your cape and your mace and whatever have you. So that there's a huge responsibility to the actor to be imaginative and to be inventive. And I found those directors that dress it up least have the most, you know, the, the greatest success and the greatest ease. Even those who are very particular. Be Langham, Hirsch, Hirsch. Uh, David William wasn't very flashy. Um, I mean, I had great experiences with with Gascon, with uh, with Manette, with uh, Des, Des, with Robin Phillips. Wonderful experiences with all these guys. But to a certain extent. So much, I mean, particularly, you know, Robin and Des, whose visual genius mm -hmm. was such that they very much, you, you, you saw something in front of the stage. I grew up with Hirsch. One of the things that Hirsch did that to me signaled how I understand that space and how to use it most critically, most soulfully. We were doing Doug Campbell's King Lear. And we had the bare stage and we had the, the balcony and the poles, the, the columns were all lined up. And in order to convey the, the destruction of the country, the nation collapsing in the second part of the play, Hirsch replaced the center pillar with a broken and charred and cut out one. He just had the guys come and go, popped another one in, but it was scarred it was burnt, and, it, and of course it's the epicenter of the building, right? And to me that said everything. We don't, visually we now know, as an audience member, I glance past the company and go, oh, the core is rotten, that the, the, the house cannot hold. I get it in one, and I, I move right back to the players, and the play, and the words. And I Operative thought, well, word, you move back to the players, the play, and the words. Well, because the yeah. way the stage is designed, too, when you start mm. messing too much with the levels, the, the mathematics of that stage are such that as you, as you walk out, Robin Phillips did a thing where he flattened it all because he didn't want the step down from the center pillar. And that gave you something. It gave you a long entryway. But, of course, not all the audience can see you. Right? They can't see you until you get to here. If you come to any play that I'm in, you'll notice a very peculiar thing, no matter what the director asks me. I won't talk. <laughs> until everyone can see me. Right. Because if they can't see me, they think they can't hear me. And if they can't hear me, then they lose it, and then I'm seconds behind, and so are they. Remind so, me what that center pillar is, because I don't know, for the people who are listening, how that center pillar is, in fact, holds the... Well, the center pillar uh, is in the center of the building of the old tent. It was the tent pole, if you will, and it lined up with that. And so it has a wonderful... Uh, spoken wheel kind of feel to it. You can come in and swing off it. Everybody looks at you as the center because all of the seats are focused on that particular point. And as you come on stage and step down, instantly we go, oh, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's here. And that physical, boom, dropping a five to six to six and a half foot actor just down at the center pillar gives them a command of the entire house, which keep in mind, when I first came here it was 2,272 seats.